So here we have our three argons. We have this is the blue one, this is the green one, this is the orange one. So what our project is sound triangulation. As you can see, each each argon is on a 3D printed mount and each each one has three sound sensors on it. But after some like deliberation, we decided to just use one sound sensor on all on each one. And so as you can see on the sound sensor, it has one red LED, but it also has another LED. So when it hears a sound, that red LED will flicker when it hears a sound. And if you look up here, uh, your your blue and black are your ground. So it goes to ground and the, the voltage of your argon. And then each sensor has a yellow, black, blue, which is your voltage, ground, and your analog reading. And all that goes back here and it goes to your D2, D3, and D4 um, input on your argon. And obviously your argon has your Wi-Fi antenna that it's hooked up to. And so these blue LEDs on the, on the green and orange are notifying you that they are hooked, that the GPS has been sent to the, well, there's a GPS reading. And so the way ours works is that the blue one is kind of like a host device. So when there's a sound that goes off, these, these two send their, their timestamps to ThinkSpeak. And so now I'm going to clap and show you what happens. And so this blue light went off. And what that means is that means that these two both heard a sound and they're notifying the host that they received one. So that's how they're communicating. And if you saw that left LED, red LED went off showing that it got a sound. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the code. So we're going to start off with the blue sensor or the blue argon. Its code is going to be separate from the orange and the uh, green. Since the blue sensor is the master or the host, it does look a little different than the green and orange, even though the green and orange do look the same. So first we're going to start off, it is using a Google Maps device locator. This is going to use to catch the GPS for each one, and we'll look at the integration later for that. So right here we have our variables being defined, just your sensor values, latitude, longitude. This bit of information right here is what it is actually going to be sending to things speak. So it creates an event called blue send, and that will be sending all this data later on to things speak. So scrolling down right here is the data that will actually be composed in that message. This is defining the variables for that message. So now this is also a part of this, which we'll go on later to evaluate. So now the setup part of the code we have, it is, this is where the GPS is subscribing to that event is actually recalling the GPS coordinate of, uh, what is sent to Google Maps. And here are the pin sets for each particle. We have the subscribe, which gets the location callback from Google Maps. And then we're also subscribing to green sound and orange sound, which is what will display on the D7 LED every time these two devices receive a sound. Now going into the loop function, we're defining the sensor value of blue which is a digital read on D2. So if the sensor value blue goes high, all it's saying is it'll store time T as time dot now, and then field four will equal time T. So it is sensor, every time the microphone or the sound sensor records a sound, it is going to store that time it catches it at in field four. And then here we go to where it actually sends the code. So if sensor value goes blue, so every time a sound is recorded on blue, is going to create a message in field one, two, three, four. This is the fields that will be sent to ThingSpeak and be able to be calculated later in MATLAB. And it does this every time. It'll publish the event. It'll set the previous publish, delay it so it doesn't resend over amount of time. And then finally, we have looking at the green sound and orange sound. These are the callbacks to the subscriptions we had. So looking at a bit of the console that is being sent, so you see here you have your green GPS. This is the hook response taken from Google. You receive a GPS coordinate. Same thing for 
green, you have orange, there's blue, and so we're going to snap. So these bits of data right here are saying, okay, the fields one, two, three, and four have been sent to things speak efficiently. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the webhooks that are being sent. So we have, for three devices, we have three integrations for Google Maps. Each one of these is what gets the GPS location for each one. The webhooks are what send to ThingSpeak individually. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at ThingSpeak channels. So we're going to say we have a total of four different channels in ThingSpeak. First one is the one from Blue Sensor. Second one is Green Sensor. Third one is Orange. And the fourth one is actually where the calculation will be output. All the data from all three sound channels will be calculated and output to here. So we'll go back to the first channel. I have went ahead and cleared all the fields so there's no data in here currently. So if we go back to the particle console, it's waiting for events. I'm going to clap once and populate those data fields. So seeing here, they've all sent their data, and this one means that ThingSpeak has received the data. So now going back into the ThingSpeak, it takes a second for it to... We'll go ahead and refresh this page. So now we can see it's taken the blue latitude, longitude, the accuracy of the reading, and the time. And then we can also see in the fields at what time it was, at each time in the value. And we can do similar, look through each one for orange or green here. Orange, and that is this field. So say we go again, clap one more time. They've all sent another set of data. Go back into the thing speak. And now we can see a second one has been sent with a different latitude and longitude. Different, same, similar time for each of the three fields. So now for the last part of the code, we're going to take a look at the MATLAB. So I have three different scripts here. I have sound triangulation, which is the actual one MATLAB will run and using each value it takes from those three fields. But since the particles are all currently in the same room, the GPS locations are similar and so will the time fields. Therefore, the result won't be clear and it won't be accurate and it technically would not work. So to prove the function of the particle, I've created a code that uses set GPS coordinates or examples of what where the coordinates would be and how far the sound is from each sensor so we can compare the data results. And this is where the test point, the sound location of the GPS coordinates of the sound location would be. So going through the code, we have these would be examples of the times that each device would record and their GPS coordinates. And eventually we have the final calculations would be green distance, blue distance, and orange distance. So to simulate this, I'm going to go ahead and hit run. So here you can see, here are the outputs of the three. You have blue distance, orange distance, and green distance. Now if we're going to compare these three values to the original distance, so first off we'll start with the lowest one, which would be orange. So, looking at this, it's 2,143 meters away. We scroll back up to the top. The distance from orange is 2,259 meters. Now, there's a little difference, and that is because of the sound only being recorded in seconds and not milliseconds, which can affect the results. Next, we have green distance, 2,829 meters. Looking here, we have 3,088 meters, similar, close to it, not exactly, but it's accurate, it's somewhat accurate. Then lastly, we have blue, which is 3,515, with the actual being 3,909. So, being said, the function works, and it creates a value close to it within a degree of accuracy the results would be more accurate if the sound recorded from each sensor would be in milliseconds and not seconds.
and take a look at field four for thing speak. So in MATLAB, this function right here is what sends all this data, blue distance, green distance, and orange distance to the thing speak channel four. So now using the MATLAB code, here are the results from the script that was ran. So now we can see that things speak is published to channel four, the distance from blue, distance from green, and distance from orange. Now, since MATLAB analysis won't work within it because it doesn't have the right toolkit, it can't automatically calculate every time the sound is triggered. So to negate that effect, we sent every time a field is updated in channels one through three, a email notification will be sent to the email of the account stating, so here is the actual email that is sent every time a field is updated. The alert is sound detected. Run the MATLAB sound triangulation.m on computer to publish the distance results. So this tells you you need to go into MATLAB, hit run, and this is where it'll output to channel four so you can compare the results and check it. And if we were to take another sound detection, rerun the same values, run again, it'll output it. We can go back into ThingSpeak channel four, and now we have a second variable that has been sent. Fields are still the same because it was the same GPS coordinates and time used, but it is showing that every time that MATLAB function is ran, a new numeric value is published for each field. Through working on this project, we ran into several difficulties. The biggest one was that while our sound sensors were able to record data in milliseconds, we were bottlenecked by the particle cloud, which can only record data in seconds. Uh, because of this, our devices are not particularly accurate as when they are close to each other, but they grow more accurate the farther apart they are. This means that they would be most effective for very loud noises over great distances such as thunder. Unfortunately, we are not able to demonstrate all of our pieces working in tandem together, even if we can show them working individually. Our next major struggle was that we only have a limited knowledge of code. This meant that it took us much longer to accomplish some things than it would have taken people who are more experienced. Our final struggle was that we had to rework a basic idea of our project. We transitioned from a total of nine sound sensors being used uh, to only three. We were very eager to see what our project would have been capable of with these nine sensors, but we realized that this was an unrealistic plan and uh, we had to cut our losses and rework some of our project. If you are interested in more details of our project, feel free to visit our hackster.io page for more information.